Let me just start by setting the context in which we are moving. And that, as Alberto already pointed out, is a world that is at a critical crossroads. In a way, we are conducting a big experiment to figure out what the plasticity of our planet is to take all the pressure we are putting upon it. And it, we, we, there's no doubt we have pushed our planet into its buffer zone. It's almost like driving a car on red without knowing how big the reserve tank is. Now, if you would be in that situation, you really would, would be quite anxious to figure out where the next gas station is. So we have to figure out how to get out of that situation where we see pressures mounting, not just from climate, but also in terms of water availability, safe water, enough water, food security, public health. We saw that the planet actually is conducting experiment with us now, feeling under pressure and say, let's see if they still can react to a pandemic. So COVID is actually as tough as it is for us, could have been much worse. And that came a bit as a shock although we should have expected it, rather than a slowly building pressure such as that that comes from climate. So what does all that mean? We have to figure out where we are, humankind as a part of the planet. A lot of the pressures we are seeing on the life supporting system is induced by our species. But we are also the only species on the planet who can take that pressure off. And we have to accept that responsibility as a society as a whole. Now within society, academia is not free floating as sometimes we like to believe. We actually have a mandate from society to provide the knowledge that le leads a safe path into the future for all for global society and all its uh, sub, sub parts. So are we measuring up to that? We actually are producing knowledge at a mind-boggling pace, but we are not producing it in the way that is needed at that point in time. And what is needed at that point in time is to add to the highly successful quote-unquote reductionist or disciplinary knowledge gathering, a more system-based holistic view of the world and diagnosing what the issues are, and then coming up with options for solutions that can address some of the problems. And in addition, why that would be a race that we never can win if we are just in a reactionary mode, we also have to be more foresightful, future thinking. Some people say, you know, future forecasting, threat casting, there are many expressions out there. But what in essence it means is, be more anticipatory while we are solving some of the problems we have created in the past to make sure that we are not just falling into that same trap over and over because then we will be in a rat race that we cannot win. Now, what does that mean for academia and how we should think of ourselves in my view? And that is what we have set up here at Arizona State University. We, if we are thinking about what we are faced with, of course, we have a mandate to discover because we want to see how the world looks, where are we coming from, where are we going, what is our situation right now. We also have to make sure that we can transmit that knowledge into what I call the learning space so that we actually can train students with profiles that are adjusted to what the big challenges are they face when they leave academia so they actually can make an impact. We have to be much more solutions oriented. And that does not mean that this is a second class of science. I think there's a, there's a spectrum between basic research and applied research and the solutions actually come from the entire spectrum. But we have to look for how can we extract it and transmit it into the outside world. And that is a fourth space that we are that we have built here, which I call the engagement space. We have to be much more linked to the outside world in terms of seeing what the problems really are, how are they struggling with, and what can we do to infuse the knowledge in a way that it can be taken up 
in packages that can be tested, that can be actually implemented, and that we can see if that works. The fifth part, of course, is we have to network. We have to think differently. We cannot be focused on small groups, on individuals in academia, as we did in the past. In fact, we have to network among institutions as a whole in order to make that work. Now, what do we have to change? We're just going back now to the learning space. There are a lot of disciplinary successes, but we, we, as I mentioned before, we have to change that by holistic system thinking, complexity think, thinking. We, we really have to understand that a, a fundamental precondition to be able to provide good insight that can be implemented is to understand the complexity of systems, the planet being the ultimate complex system we are dealing with. So understanding of complexity from intuitive to quantitative has to be part of our education, actually, in, I would say from pre-K to graduate uh, education. There has to be more solution thinking in the sense that we have to provide decision support for decision makers in many parts of the stakeholder community. We have to learn how to relate incomplete knowledge. We are trained to just release our knowledge when we are 99.9% .9 sure. That takes too long. The problems are outpacing us. So we have to understand how or learn and then to, to apply how to relate partial knowledge with the appropriate caveats. But that is still better than letting decision makers make their decisions without any knowledge that we are still holding because we want to prove it. So this is a fine line to walk, but I think we have to learn how to deal with that. What does it need? It needs new disciplines, new structures. We, we need new ways of building schools that are dedicated to that. Here we build an entire college that's uh, dedicated to that. We have to tailor programs, create new programs that are much more uh, dedicated to, to the, the bigger cause. More practice oriented was already mentioned. Um, more engagement with the outside world was mentioned. Digitizing so that we reach more. So we, we, have a, we are approaching 150,000 students at ASU. We soon will be at the crossover point where we have as many people who are on campus as we have people who are getting their degree via digital platforms. So we have to develop these digital platforms and tailor them that they actually fulfill our purpose. Um, we have to fuse disciplines. We have to, had already has been mentioned, we have to integrate arts and sciences, humanities with social sciences and natural sciences, medical sciences, engineering sciences. That is part of not just inter, but transdisciplinarity that we need to address these problems. We have to, in essence, also learn a new language. We are often talking about sustainability, sustainable development. I change the language that we are using to global futures, which includes sustainability, but it also is actually nudging us much more to thinking ahead and thinking forward. We also, in terms of how we function, we are lacking the forms. I mean, I think a lot of people actually want to go into uh, this solution space, but don't know how to do it because they're in a comfort zone. So we have to help them. We also have to create recognition systems so that they feel they are actually you know, doing work that can be evaluated the same way. And I will uh, close uh, with that final point. We are actually way too senior oriented. We have to listen to the voice of the younger people, the youth movements, our students. Our students are actually a driving force on us that we often neglect. And without doing that, we always will be behind the curve. So these are some, maybe some random thoughts, but I, I hope they come across as somewhat connected. And with that, uh, I would like to, to uh, conclude my remarks. Thank you.